What difference does it make when you record a bass through a DI as opposed to putting your mic on a cab? There's a really good reason why producers, recording engineers, front of house sound designers get really picky about which one you should use. So in this video, I'm gonna talk you through what the differences between each of them are. I'm gonna have the same bass going through one DI, but then also through an amp that's gonna be mic'd up with a cab. And at any point, if you do get curious about the gear I'm using in this video, I've left links to all of it down in the description below. So let's start with a DI. DI stands for direct injection. And when you go through a DI, like a Sans amp, like a Noble, like a A-Design's Ready, you are capturing 100% of your signal. And it is by far, I think, the simplest and easiest way to actually get a bass sound from your bass into a mixing desk or front of house. The great things about a DI, as I say, you capture 100% of your signal and it's also incredibly clean sounding. So when you put this in the context of a gig or a recording session, you get a much more consistent sound with a DI. You can be very sure of what you're actually gonna get when you turn up and you plug your stuff in. One of the problems with a DI though, even the really nice ones with tubes and valves, often get criticized for sounding a little bit lifeless. And to understand that criticism properly, we have to start looking at using a mic on a cab and understand how that's different. When you put a microphone up to a cab, essentially it's just capturing what it hears. So your signal this time is going from the bass into the amplifier, through the speakers, and then into the microphone. This means you get quite a few different stages that can actually color your sound. So going from your bass, first of all, into the amp head itself, depending on how you've done your EQ, that can affect the sound. And then from there, going into the speakers, again, depending on what kind of speakers you've got, maybe you've got 10s, 12s, 15s, 18 perhaps. But then there's a final step, which is having the sound travel from the speaker through the air into the microphone, which can have a really profound effect on the sound that you hear. Because of this, people often feel that using a mic presents you with a sound that has a lot more character and a lot more presence to it. And if you're recording a tune that's meant to be loud, like a big rock tune, it's actually sometimes much more preferable to use a mic in the sound because you get something that actually not only sounds loud, depending on how far you turn it up, you also get the physical sensation of loudness because you get a lot of air that's being moved. So if we have a listen to the sound of these, first of all, we'll start with a DI. So this is just the DI sound. So you can hear it sounds very big, very clean. I'm getting a very kind of full picture, if you like, of the signal. So I get a, a lot of low end, a lot of clean, crisp top end. Nothing's really being lost in the chain between the bass, the DI, and then going into the computer. So now the same thing, but what you're gonna hear is the mic up against the cab. So we don't get quite as full a picture of the sound here. You know, we don't have quite as much low end, quite as much top end, it's not quite as smooth sounding, but there does feel like there's a lot more character to this as a sound. So does it mean it's always better to go with a mic if we get more character and we get more presence? Well, it kind of depends what you want. So the goal is not to pick one or the other, it's to realize which is the best tool for the job that you're doing. For example, if you were recording a massive rock tune and you know that the bass is gonna be a real feature of the mix, so I've got something like Love in an Elevator by Aerosmith in mind here, you have a listen to the bass sound on that, it sounds absolutely enormous, it sounds really loud, it kind of almost feels loud to listen to, it has a huge amount of presence. I don't know if that sound was done just with a mic or perhaps it's a blend of a mic and a DI, but it really wouldn't surprise me if a mic is somewhere in the signal chain pretty prominently there. However, what I find a lot of the time when I go and do tours is that DIs are a great option because they give you a much more consistent sound night to night. They also don't suffer from issues like bleed. I mean, if you've got a mic on a cab and it's near a drummer, you don't want to be picking up any of the drummer because that's just gonna get in the way. However, if you want the best of both worlds, what you can always do is actually combine the two. You can always use an EQ to sculpt a DI sound so that it captures a lot of the low end and also some of the detail on the top end. And if you scoop out the mids and that would be where you put your mic sound, that's where you have a lot of the character that comes in. So here I've got a blend of the mic and I've got a blend of the DI. So I've really got the best of both worlds there. If you wanna check out some really good options for base DIs for a load of different price ranges, I've actually done a video comparing five 
you can check that out in the card up here. But also let me know if you want to see me do videos on things like good mics for recording or good amp plugins, then by all means leave me a comment and tell me down below. If you've enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in another lesson real soon. Take care.